multilinguals, what's your, they didn't realize I could understand their language story. I'm born to Russian immigrants. Whenever my family and I travel abroad, we almost exclusively speak Russian and tend to get better attitudes from people when they don't think we're American tourists. When I was 12 or so, we were in a cafe in Belgium, and a large group of 20-something guys walks in. My dad gets a worried look on his face, drops his voice, and says, we are Americans right now. He explained to me later that they were Chechen gang members, at the time when Chechnya was at war with Russia and anti-Russian sentiments were extremely high. Happened to my wife when she worked at McDonald's. She looks a little on the Asian side but is from Guatemala. A group of Spanish-speaking people pay at the drive through and try short-changing her. Driver says a sa maldita china no save contar the damn Asian lady can't count. Wife takes the money and very politely says they are short in Spanish. Driver turns red while passengers couldn't stop laughing. When I was in Romania, as a Hungarian, I went to buy some food in a small town. I didn't know people in the restaurant were ethnic Hungarians, so when I asked for my food in English, the guy shouted, a burger for this fucker in Hungarian to the kitchen. I was curious how it would end, so I pretended I didn't understand. When he got me my food and asked for double the price, I said, now in Hungarian. Look, dude, you can give me that for normal price, or I'm leaving it, but I sure as hell ain't coming back to you motherfuckers ever again. I lived in Japan when I was little and retook Japanese in college so I didn't sound like a child when I spoke. To solidify my new language skills, I went to my hometown for about 6 weeks a summer in college. It was a small town so most people remembered me or my family, but some people I stayed with, 6 weeks. 11 families that at least wanted me to spend a night in their home, were new to the area since we left 15 years or so earlier. One of these families had a high school aged son who wanted to borrow me for his high school's international festival. No problem. I'd go and let other high schoolers practice their English with me and do carnival games and stuff. However, the guy apparently did not get the message that I spoke Japanese and proceeded to introduce me to all his friends as his girlfriend. I let him have his moment for the night, without leading him on, but on the train ride back to his home, he was talking to his friend in Japanese and I joined in on the conversation. Also in Japanese. The embarrassment on his face was worth knowing all his friends thought I was his girlfriend. I was a Mexican living in Germany with a Chinese school assigned roommate. He claimed to not speak any English and my German wasn't good so we weren't able to communicate. My German roommates then claimed he told them he didn't speak any German, so I gather he was antisocial. I took three years of Mandarin in high school, but I didn't try using it on him. About three months in, he and another Chinese student got off the bus at the same stop I did and we all walked together to our flat. Heard him talking about me and his friend laughing but held back. Once we got to our flat, I opened the door and told them to please enter in Chinese. I still remember his shocked face. His friend later complimented my Chinese, while a few weeks later my roommate claimed my Chinese was so bad that he couldn't understand me. I seriously think he just wanted no contact with me. Possibly because he never followed the cleaning schedule. My husband grew up in multiple countries and, though his English is pretty heavily accented, it's a sort of unidentifiable hybrid of all the countries where he learned it in school, he didn't move to the US until he was in his late 20s. When we went for our wedding rings and in walk super white me and my very Latino looking, then, Finnis. It's a tiny little shop and the two proprietors begin to talk amongst themselves in Hebrew, one of my husband's first languages, about how much they should charge. The first says, it should be at least $650, the second says, tell him it will be $700 at least, maybe, $750, I can try that. My husband says, in Hebrew, but with a smile. I'll give you $500. They just froze, and everyone laughed and we went into a more open negotiation. We paid $600 and I think everyone was happy. I live in Austria, but my dad is from Brazil, all my Austrian aunts and uncles married a Brazilian. My grandparents from my mother's side opened and lead a factory of our family company in Brazil, that's why everyone was there, but some eventually came back to Austria, just like my mom with my dad. Me and my siblings were raised multilingual but lived most of our life in Austria. So once when I was around 10 my mom and me were on a tram in Vienna with my little brother, who was around 2 at the time, in a stroller and he starts crying, really loudly. Then one Brazilian lady starts speaking really loudly and in an obnoxious tone something in the lines of. Well, these European folks don't know how to treat their children with love. How can someone be so cold and unaffectionate to a child as to let them scream without taking them out of the stroller and holding them? We were standing BTW. 
There was no seat big enough at the time where we could leave the stroller, so, I was getting worried we were doing something wrong, I wanted to comfort my brother and get him out. But my mom stopped me and a really loudly said in Portuguese, leave him, it is too dangerous to take him out of the stroller while we are standing here and the tram is moving. You could see the women's face go from red, to white and back to red, get up and get out so fast at the next exit that we just started laughing and my brother ultimately calmed down. Not really exciting, but I find it funny when I think back. I was in New York, and entered one of those electronic stores. I asked the price of an item in English. The guy at the counter turns to another guy who on a ladder stocking items and asks in Hebrew how much he should charge. I speak Hebrew, so I'm following their dialogue. The guy on the ladder looks at me and notices that I am following them with my eyes, then he switches to Arabic. I don't speak Arabic. The counter guy tells me the price in English. I say too expensive in Hebrew and leave. Two deaf people were in my store talking, signing, shit on me. My sister is deaf. I know us. After I got their money. I kindly told them to get the fuck out and ended the conversation with the one sign everyone knows. What did they say sign? Calling me fat, calling my wife a slut, and my son who is a redhead they signed rather be dead than red. Just all around ignorant fucks. I went to a psychiatric emergency ward once and asked for help and if they were comfortable to speak English. I understand Danish but have a hard time making myself understandable in it and didn't really feel like an idiot at a crucial time of my life. I stayed there for four days without anyone realizing I knew what they were saying about me right in front of me. Two of the nurses thought I was cute. One doctor thought I was lying all the time. A patient thought I was a spy for the staff. A lot happened in those four days. It made my stay way more enjoyable than it should have been. My wife is Indian and her family speaks Gujarati. I've spent many years trying to pick it up and have found it to be very difficult as there are no great resources that I am aware of to learn it. You just have to listen and try to guess the context. Anyway, over the years I've gotten pretty good, and when my wife sent was visiting from India and she went right into my wife about how much weight I'd gained and how bad my diet must be. I understood every word and stopped her about two minutes into her rant. Turns out it didn't stop her from continuing. Some workers at an airport restaurant were saying very inappropriate things about my sister in Spanish. The women were criticizing her appearance, arguing with the men, who were saying very inappropriate observations about what she was wearing and what they would do to her. I ordered in Spanish, workers all went silent and looked stunned. I asked detailed questions about the food menu in Spanish, so that they understood I knew everything they were saying. I gave her my credit card, but she never swiped it, and a $40, airport, meal was free. So at the end of the day, it was a win. I only speak one language but was training this guy on a till a few years ago and there were two French girls chatting in French and suddenly he got a huge smile and said merci to the girls. One burst out laughing and the other one turned bright red. Turned out she was talking about how hot she found him. I actually have a reverse story. I had to act as if I didn't speak a language. I was going back home after having studied for a while in Uppsala, Sweden and during the time I spent there, I had the occasion to learn quite a lot of Swedish. Anyways, to go back back home, I had to buy a train ticket to Orlando airport from Uppsala Central to get to my flight which was really early in the morning and I did so. But bought my ticket with the company SJ, Stadens Jaren Vager. However, the first train that arrived at the station and that was going to the airport was a UL, a plant's local trafique, different company, train which I did not buy a ticket for. Worried that I would be late to the airport, I still took the train thinking that they almost never check the tickets, and thinking that my ticket might actually work for that company as well. Well, they did check that day. The controller asks me in Swedish to see the ticket. So I hand it to him and he looks at me and says in Swedish wrong ticket. So I decide to do the dumb tourist and I pointed to my passport and said in bad French accent. Sorry, I don't speak Swedish and I explained that I thought this ticket was the right one to go to the airport. He immediately gave me my ticket back and said that it was okay, but to check next time to buy the right ticket with the right company, in English. So I got off without any fine or anything like that because I faked not being able to speak Swedish. I still feel bad about it today. If the controller that met me that day is readying this I just want to say, tack hawk for lat. In verse. A long time ago, my brother had a habit of making remarks about people in Spanish whenever he got annoyed, frustrated, or just wanted to make fun of someone. Kinda like a gossiping schoolgirl. I told him it wasn't cool, not because he shouldn't be talking Spanish in public, but that he shouldn't be using it in such an underhanded way. If he had a grievance that he needed to get off his chest, he should tell them in a language they're likely to understand where we live English. He kept doing it anyway. 
One time, we were leaving a major retailer and the store greeter asked to see his receipt before he could exit with the bagged merchandise in the cart. He had a hard time finding where he put his receipt and he got frustrated. He switched to Spanish and said some variety of, this old bitch and the store greeter immediately called him out on it in Spanish. He was like a deer caught in the headlights. I was so happy she did it. He made a weak attempt at reasserting his right to be frustrated at the situation, but you could see he was very embarrassed at having been caught talking trash in Spanish. I love my brother, but I'm glad he stopped doing that soon after. I'm Romanian and an architect, and in Western Europe a lot of construction workers come from Romania. So a few colleagues of mine invited me to this party on a construction site, in Germany we have a celebration once the structure stands, the Richtfest. Asking me to basically eavesdrop on the Romanians to find out how work went and if they were bitching about the architects or whatnot. Didn't hear anything negative from the Romanians all night so as they were preparing to leave, early, right after dinner, I bummed a cigarette off one of them, in Romanian. They were thrilled. Finally, someone could translate between them and the other workers and planners and they were so proud of their work and so happy to be able to communicate with everyone so we all, architects, clients, workers, engineers, got hella drunk, smoked a million cigarettes and had the best time I've ever had on a construction site. My colleagues then reported that the work continued with a lot of new motivation the following day and good times were had by all. I'm also a chick so there's an extra layer of positivity to this, as it can be really tough as a woman in the construction industry. Those guys made us all proud. Be excellent to each other and treat the people whose labor builds our world with respect. Have a story? Share it with us in the comments section.